Hello, and welcome back to another Tesla vlog with me, Adam Uninformed. We've just hit 2023, and new automotive have just released an excellent blog post detailing yet another decline in petrol and diesel new car sales, whilst the whole UK new car market was down around 3% year on year. But pure electric vehicles now represent one in every three sales, and that's up from one in every four, just one year prior. Now, if you are in the market for a new car, the thought of trading in your petrol motor and the prospect of owning an electrified vehicle may have crossed your mind, simply because maybe you need or maybe you want a new car, or maybe you're simply just trying to reduce your monthly running costs. If your next car was electrified, that would mean a petrol electric hybrid, like a plug-in hybrid, commonly known as a PHEV, you know, the ones that take a small amount of electric charging, but still require a tank of petrol. Or maybe you've considered a fully electric vehicle that runs solely on electric power, but you aren't quite convinced it's suitable for your needs and requirements from the horror stories online. If you're confused or you're curious between what is right between the two types of different vehicles, this is my perspective as an owner of a fully electric vehicle where skipping that petrol hybrid, which tends to symbolize a mid-ground or a best of both scenario, to your surprise, it may not be the most ideal solution for you. My perspective comes as a average driver. We are one car household driving up to 10,000 miles a year for a family of four. Therefore, I suspect this will be relevant to most of you watching. However, there will be always be outliers and different personal circumstances that I can't account for. So not all of this may be applicable to your highly unique circumstances. I also want to clarify, I'm not trying to alienate anyone here. Maybe you'll agree with my thoughts, maybe you won't. I know this won't convince everyone, but hopefully my ownership experience with my Tesla Model 3 will help at least some of you skip that hybrid choice too, because ultimately these hybrids are designed to be a stepping stone into EV ownership anyway. But for me, why step when you can leap ahead? That is a case I'll be very much setting out in my video today. So if this video sounds like a fascinating insight, as always, buckle up. Please do hit that like button to show me some of your virtual love and support for Tesla and EVs. Hit the subscribe button so you can continue on this Tesla EV journey with me. Finally, hit the notification bell so you're notified of all my upcoming electric vehicles as soon as they're available. Right folks, let's get into the grit of it. I think it's probably fair to start with a super quick beginner's difference between what a PHEV, a BEV, a mild hybrid, and a KEV is. And I made this joke before in a similar video, but as a dad, I think it's a natural instinct to make a fool of myself more than once. So BEV is generally exclusively a female name, probably over the age of 30. However, it also stands for battery electric vehicle. So these are pure electric cars and are exclusively battery operated. So typically we are looking at your Tesla Model 3, your Tesla Model Y, your Kia EV6, your Hyundai Ioniq 5, your Ford Mustang Mach-E, your VW ID3, or your Volkswagen ID4, to name a few. PHEV stands for Plug-in Hybrid Electric Vehicle, and as per the name, these cars are a combination of a mixture of a standard, mainly petrol engine, paired up with a small battery, a combination of both petrol and electric. Commonly, you get 20 to 40 advertised miles of range from the electric components, together with your petrol operating miles as well from your fuel tank. So the cars you're typically looking at here are your Toyota Prius, your BMW 330e, your Mercedes A-Class 250e, or your Volvo XC60 recharge. And finally, Kev. If a dealer is going to try to sell you a Kev, you probably want to avoid this at all costs because it's commonly known as a male name and it has nothing to do with motor vehicles. And if I was you, I'd probably run about now. Finally, self-charging such my hybrid. I don't think I'm alone in saying that these are predominantly petrol cars and the battery power used to supplement the proportion of the vehicle is going to be minute, next to nothing. Electric range varies, but we're talking about pure EV contribution of about a mile or up to three kilometers. Should this even be considered an electrified vehicle? To be honest, I think it's a bit unfair to be included, but just my opinion. Anyhow, moving on to efficiency and range of both hybrids and pure electric cars. It's widely reported that the biggest consumer concern about battery electric vehicles is the maximum range available, or commonly known as range anxiety. But did you know that the Telegraph just reported that EV drivers are driving more than your typical petrol and diesel drivers? Interesting, right? It's like an EV owner's experience just doesn't match up with the range anxiety expectation that most fear. Well, the article goes on to say that range anxiety has been totally overstated and over the years drivers are more confident than before with the increasing public charging network and max vehicle ranges have been increasing over the years. 
As an owner of a Tesla Model 3 for over two years now, my vehicle had a rated range of 263 miles when I purchased it. That vehicle is now rated at over 300 miles if you brought a new one today. And this is the lowest range Tesla Model 3 that you can buy brand new. But it's not about how far you can go. It's about how far you actually go. Now, let me make sense of that. How often do you do over 300 miles? Heck, even 200 miles in one stint. Chances are, if you are an average driver like me, even doing 10,000 miles a year, that's like 833 miles a month or 192 miles a week if averaged out. The true beauty of owning a Tesla and if you have access to charging from home or even your place of work, your day-to-day -day driving can be fully recovered without driving out of your way. And the best part is, this is happening whilst you're asleep or whilst you work. That's true convenience. I drive home, hook up in less than 45 seconds, then it automatically charges overnight at a cheap electric rate to achieve a penny of a mile cost at present. Personally, I rarely test the range limits on my Tesla, and then when I get close, it's for road trips to the seaside, etc. You can see an example of a recent trip in the top right of the screen now, but I've used the Tesla supercharger network just five times over the past year, and the rest of my charging has been from home, and that just reiterates my point that day to day, most EVs today will more than cover your typical needs with minimal inconvenience. Now let's flip this to a plug-in hybrid. Usually the hybrid car will prefer a blend of both EV and petrol power, but if you manually select full EV mode for economy purposes, in 2023 you can expect to get an advertised EV range of 20 to 40 miles, just purely depending on the car. In an ideal world where we can achieve that, the realistic prospect is that you'll still rely on a petrol or diesel engine despite manually requesting for it to be in an EV only mode. And this happens for a number of reasons, but let's face it, we've all been in this scenario. You are used to driving in a petrol only mode. It's only natural and old habits tend to stick, even despite your best intentions. But be honest here, outside the first couple of months, would you recharge your battery to full every day to get the best out of it? I don't know about you, but personally, I'd probably get a bit lazy with it and just rely on the petrol power. You have to be honest with yourself here. Maybe your routine of just relying on the refueling when it comes to daily driving will remain. Effectively, voiding the benefits of the hybrid system and then you're just carrying extra weight of it too. And that's gonna increase your full consumption over a petrol alternative. But let's say you stay true and recharge every night. Even if your daily range came to the advertised EV range of 30 odd miles of a hybrid, for reasons out of your control, the car may cut out of the pure electric mode for many other reasons, despite your best intentions to remain in the super efficient EV mode. It can switch directly to the petrol or a mixed power for actions like you're accelerating too hard or you're driving beyond a certain speed, uh, maybe you're turning the heating on or the aircon on. I even read that if you overutilize the full EV mode for an extended period, the fuel can actually degrade in quality over time and the engine may need to burn some fuel as a result. So you can't guarantee that you can use the hybrid in its most efficient mode all the time. So it's likely to be a mixture of both EV and petrol, which for me translate to A, not receiving the same or similar cost benefits of running a pure electric car, and B, doing both recharging and refueling is now even more convenient than before because there are now two methods to attend to, driving out of your way or planning to refuel at a pump and then followed by a recharge elsewhere. Moving on to the maintenance and service side of things. I was surprised by the difference between the two. So your usual annual service is expected with the hybrid PHEV still. But a contrasting point you need to take into account is that there's even more components to service because you are now driving a vehicle that isn't just powered by a petrol engine, but also an electric powertrain. More moving parts translates to more friction points and that's more wear and tear. Interestingly, it's probably more work than a typical petrol car and way more work than an electric car. Why is that? Well, an electric powertrain on an exclusive electric platform has a significant reduction in moving parts, effectively meaning that there are less components to fail, so pure electric vehicles should be way more reliable to operate. For example, with a Tesla Model 3, there is no annual requirement to take it to a garage for servicing, just a handful of maintenance points for which you could complete a majority of them yourself. Tesla states on its website that the vehicle should generally be serviced on an as-needed basis. Therefore, it's on the owner or keeper to just highlight issues as and when they appear. The maintenance points to be addressed at home consist of just replacing the screen wash, rotating the tires, changing the cabin filters, and potentially draining the brake fluid. You don't need to do these every year either. Therefore, Tesla are confident in the reliability of the vehicle so you can reap the benefits as a result of sticking to a single electric only solution rather than a petrol electric dual solution.
Before I round up with the conclusion, I want you to consider why do PH EVs exist in the first place? Were they created to provide the next ultimate car driving experience, or do they exist solely to simply meet air quality requirements and offer a car of let's say 80% the same as before? Some may say it tackles the key perceived problem, that is range anxiety. But as I mentioned before, EV drivers are driving more than petrol or diesel owners. Even if we consider the hybrid design, most hybrids you can buy as a petrol or diesel alternative of the same model. It's very much built with an ICE design first and a hybrid design second. So they are designed to fit around the shell of what they already have. That said, in all fairness, some battery electric vehicles produced by traditional automakers do do a similar thing, um, say the Kia e-Niro, but these automakers, they generally just have a structure that's a jackable trades, but not specialized to a single platform where you would find the greatest benefits. For example, with the BMW 330e, it has around 105 liters less space as petrol and diesel alternatives of the same car. And if this is a family car, all that space adds up. With a Tesla, it's designed to be an electric car only, and so you see added usable space all over the place, like the inclusion of a front and hidden compartments. That's all because it's specializing for one platform only. So to conclude, even though PHEVs are very much their own product, to me, when you get underneath the marketing surface, they just seem like a compromised petrol vehicle. Electric cars are increasingly becoming the car of choice, even if you look at Norway. I believe 80% of new cars purchased are now fully electric. Hyundai have even just came out and said that they will only sell electric cars from now on in Norway. That's a big change, but also a signal as to the next car of choice. To me, hybrid doesn't really secure the benefits of having an electric powertrain. So if you are not convinced to go fully electric or you are still on the fence, I'd recommend just trying the old fashioned way of test driving a Tesla. It won't disappoint. If that still doesn't work, then hey, I tried. If you still enjoyed this video, you may enjoy this video on the screen now where I discuss why you shouldn't buy an electric car just for the environment. I hope this video was of some use to you today though and if it was, let me know in the comments section below. If you're not sure what to comment and you got this far in the video, you can simply drop me the comments electric vs hybrid and I'll give you a cheeky thumbs up for the support. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends and family. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.